Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will show you three modifiers in Jetpack Compose that are really cool to use but not many people know of. And the first one can be used for texts in your app. So if you have a text that is very long, so this text is very long and we might just copy paste this a few times to make this even longer then this would normally exceed the balance of the text if we set the max lines to one. So when launching this, this would look like this. You just want to have a text that is only one line long, but the text itself is very long, so it goes beyond the screen's balance. What can you do in this case? Well, of course, there are ways to have an ellipse size here uh, that it abbreviates the text with three dots, but that is something that is pretty known. What is not so known is that we can use a modifier called basic marquee. We need to add this experimental annotation here in order to use that. But if we now relaunch this and take a look, then you will know this from music player apps. So the text will basically just move very slowly until the user can fully read it. Of course, in in real text, if where, where, the, where you want the user to read a longer text, this is not so suited. But as I said, if you have a music player, for example, where you want to show a long name of a song together with the album, the interpret, or so, then um, I think this is a really cool modifier to achieve this behavior really easily. The next cool modifier I would like to show you is one that I would like to apply to this box. So we just have a box, we make it fill the whole or width of our screen, and then inside of that box, we have an image which in this case, I just want to load from our resources. So we can set that to a painter resource, our drawable, and that that's called Kermit in my case. The content description can be null for this example. And the uh, modifier of this image can just be modifier fill max width. And to really just show the whole image, we want to set the content scale to content scale that fill width. So we just fill the whole width and the height gets cropped so that it fills uh, the whole width. But what kind of modifier do I now want to show you? That modifier needs to be applied to our box. And it's called a magnifier. Because with that modifier, we get a very cool zoom in effect. So we on the one hand need to specify a source center. So where we want to have that magnify effect. Let's just choose a random offset for now. I will show you something even cooler in a moment. We would just set the uh, X to 200 pixels and the Y to 200 pixels. And if we launch this now and take a look, then you can see we have a little square here in our image, which zooms in into our image. And that is what this magnifier modifier does. Like this, it's pretty boring and, and not really useful. But you know this in some apps, for example, these typical document scanner apps where you need to select the four corners of a document. Then you have the problem that as soon as you kind of drag over this image to select the corner, you don't see the corner anymore because your finger is over it. And in that case, what these apps often do is they display such a zoom in effect above your finger so you can still see where you select or where you put that corner. And you can also achieve this very easily with this magnifier modifier. So in that case, we could just have a dynamic offset which um, basically just moves this magnifier and this uh, zoom in effect. So we can say by actually remember mutable state off. And here we pass in an offset that zero. So um, it just starts at the X and Y position being equal to zero. Alt enter to import that. Then we can just go ahead in our box, add a pointer input modifier with which we can just track our touch inputs and the positions. The key can remain true here, so we don't want to re-execute this block in any case. You would need to pass something for this key if you would use some state this pointer input sc scope would depend on, but that's not the case in this case. Here we can say detect drag gestures. We get the change and the drag amount, which we don't need. And in here, we can then update our offset to the new position of our change offset. So that is really just the position where our finger moved after we dragged and we then update our offset state. So we can then use this for our magnifier lens to display it, for example, at our dynamic offset minus this offset, let's set X to zero and Y to 200 pixels. So that way we take our dynamic offset, which is exactly where the user's finger is, and we subtract this offset. So we subtract 200 pixels on the Y axis. So we display the magnifier lens a little bit above our finger. So we get the effect that I talked about. 
Over right now, the source center really refers to the area where the zoom in effect actually happens. That's not entirely true because we only want this to happen at our dynamic offset, so where the finger is, but we want the lens, the zoom in bubble to appear at this position. So we actually need to cut this out here and just leave this at offset. So we zoom in at exactly where our finger is, but we then show the zoom in bubble where we say magnifier center right here. Oops, now I copied this empty line. Let's quickly retype this offset minus offset 0f 200f. And if we now relaunch this and take a look here in our app, then we will notice something really cool that we can take this and drag it here wherever we want and we see this little zoom in effect above our cursor. Of course, this uh, kind of rectangle looks pretty ugly right now. We can also fix this with this modifier. So we can go in here we can assign something called a style, which we can set to a magnifier style. We can set the size, for example, to a DP size of 100 DP. I'll enter to import that times 100 DP. And we can set the corner radius to something really large. So we have perfectly round corners and therefore a circle. If we relaunch this and take a look, then we now have a little circle here with which we can zoom in on whatever we want. Pretty cool, right? Coming to the last secret modifier here, not many people know of, because usually when you want to draw some custom shapes or custom paths on the screen, what you need is a canvas. And in JPEG Compose, you can create a canvas with a canvas composable. So you have a modifier, fill max size, for example. And then in here, you get a draw scope where you can draw a circle, an arc, an image, a line, whatever you want to draw. That is the typical way of how we can use a canvas in Jetpack Compose. But what not many people know is that there's also a modifier you can use to transform any composable into a canvas. So if we would want to draw a red circle, for example, on top of this image, then we wouldn't actually need to kind of have a, a box with a canvas and this image composable. No, we can actually use a modifier called draw with content. Or you can use draw behind, which will uh, draw things on a canvas that is behind this composable. But since in this case, you want to draw something on top of our image, we need to use draw with content. And this also gives you a content draw scope, which you can now use to draw the content. So that will be the actual composable, or you could draw a circle, or you could draw an arc. So you have the same functionality as you also have with a normal canvas, just that this time you only need a modifier and not a whole new composable. So what we could do is we could say, First, we want to draw the content, so the actual box composable with the image in it. And then on top of that, we want to draw our circle. We can choose color.red, for example. We can set something for the radius, something like maybe 200 pixels. And we can set the center to an offset, for example, or a dynamic offset. That, that doesn't make any sense in this case, but just that you see how this works. If we relaunch this, then you can see here's our circle. And if we move this, then we have our red circle here on top of our image. And of course the zoom in effect now zooms in on our red circle. Um, so we have two red circles here, but that comes from the magnifier lens. If we comment this out, then, oops, then you won't have these two red circles, but only this one here, which we can move with our cursor. So as you can see, you don't need a canvas in Compose, at least not the separate canvas composable, but you can just make use of this draw with content or draw behind modifier to transform any composable into a canvas. And if you found some new tips in this video, then guess how many of such tips you will find in my premium courses, which are more advanced Android courses that will really prepare you as an Android developer for the industry. If that sounds good to you, check the first link down below to see all my advanced courses. Other than that, thanks so much for watching this video. I will see you back in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye bye.